Hey everybody, Tom's here. Today we've got a, something we're going to show you on how to prevent damage from your sawmill and when you have a blade blow up. Blade blow ups happen if you use a sawmill for any length of time, you will experience a blade blow up. Or if you sharpen your own blades, after so many sharpenings and everything, you, you fatigue the blade enough after running it that many hours on it, that many board foot, and they weaken and they explode. This right here is a trick that will save the actual the tension assembly and also save your, your box that's around your sawmill. AKA on a Timber King sawmill, that's the red box around the wheels where the blade travels. If you have a lot of blade blowups, you'll see that box start to expand out uh, because it's a very violent event that takes place. But this right here is something you can do. So we have this rubber spray hose that I got from Tractor Supply. It's an inner diameter of three quarter inch and the exterior I believe is like an, an inch or so. Um, it really doesn't matter on the, on the PSI rating or anything like that, but you want a three quarter inch inner diameter, and then you're going to go ahead, measure off an inch and a quarter. So we measured off an inch and a quarter, and then we're going to go ahead and cut that off. And we're going to put that on the uh, sawmill. So let me go ahead and cut this off. We'll head down to the sawmill and show you how it goes on. Okay, folks. Now we're back at the sawmill. We've got our tubing here. It's a three quarter inch inner diameter everything, and we've cut it to an inch and a quarter. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're actually gonna put it right in this section right here between this actual aluminum block and then the framework right here and everything that your pressure gauge uh, sets onto. So by changing it out, when you have a blade blow up, <laughs> this right here will provide kind of a, a shock buffer. So when all that stuff discharges, all that pressure and, and heads back and everything, you're not gonna slam against here and then cause these threads to be ripped, uh, stripped out and also to save on your frame. So the box right here, as you can see, we have had some blade blow ups and everything. And when you have a blade blow up, it starts to hit this, this frame out. Cause it's, like I said, it's a violent type of uh, event. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this T handle. So dad's gonna go ahead and take this off. And when you take this off, he's gonna take the entire assembly out. We're gonna inspect the threads on the actual uh, T handle. And we're also gonna look at the block. Um, we are also having a slight issue on our pressure gauge here. It's not reading back to zero anymore. Uh, we've changed out the fluid and everything and it is sticking a little bit. Um, so not sure this actually could have been caused by a blade blow. Maybe, maybe something internally got hurt. Okay, folks, we've taken the T handle off and we have learned the proper technique to get this on there. Three quarter inch is tight on here. First things first, we're going to place it on the frame here. My dad's going to go ahead and push all the way down until it bottoms out. Then... I have to hold it here, push a little bit further in there so we can get some of those threads. There we go. Now we're going to go through because the one inch will fit through the actual opening. And there you go. Okay, so there. Now it's threaded on there. Okay, so now we've got the grease gun. Go ahead and put that on that Zerk fitting. And give her a few shots of grease. There you have it. So, again, rubber bumper installed. That'll prevent you from having a, a bigger issue on your hand just by softening that blow if you ever do have a blade blow up. So, I hope you found this video informational. Um, we also did change out the hydraulic fluid in this. We are getting a little bit of a, the gauge sticking. We might have to get a new gauge here. Um, but to add oil to this is actually quite simple. We did take the whole assembly off. There's plenty of oil in this reservoir here, but there's nothing in here. You just pop this cap off right here. We added our hydraulic fluid and we're good to go. So yeah, other than that, we're gonna see how she cuts. And if we have a blade blow up in the near future, we'll uh, report back on how well this, this actually worked out. But we've had other people do this uh, modification. It's worked out really great. <laughs> oh, wait folks, there's more. We need this. So as I was editing this video, I look back, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm watching us take this whole assembly off. So watch this, you take this whole assembly off, and what does it do? It passes through the hole. So if it passes through the hole, if you have a blade blow up, that does absolutely nothing for you. So watch that, bloop, right through the hole. You need something to stop, like the, the, uh, the rubber here, so you actually have that cushion. You know what that cushion's gonna, or what that's gonna be? Gonna be a washer so we had to find a washer that fits so there's a three quarter inch uh inner diameter washer and everything so i'm going to go ahead and take this off 
without the help of my dad this time, so we'll see how well this works. I might have to get a pair of pliers. There we go. I can unscrew it. And get grease all over my hand because we just added all that fresh grease to it yesterday. That's great. And then <laughs> we'll add this washer to it and see how that works. So the only thing is I'm not sure if this washer <laughs> will fit because it's pretty wide and everything. Um, I've got to put this on here. It appears like it'll work. So do a test. Nope. So I gotta go to the shop and grind down an edge off of here. Once I do that, then we should make it work. So let's go ahead. Yeah, it's not quite centered. We got a little bit here to move over. Hopefully you can see that. So I gotta take off, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna take off like a quarter inch. I think a quarter inch off of there should help. Yeah, you can see right there. It's not quite there. All right, let's go up to the shop grind this off and then we'll come right back out okay folks now we're gonna go ahead and use the grinder here oh, and I've marked on here approximately how much I want to take off This right here is why you're wearing gloves because this sucker is hot. Right. A little more to go. There you have it. All right. We've got it cut back. Happy way it looks. Wish it would focus a little more, but this sucker is burning hot. I'm gonna go ahead and chill it down in some water. Go from there. Okay, we've got our washer ready. I'm gonna see if I can repeat the steps I did with my dad yesterday by myself and then manage to get this really tight piece on there. All right. So gauge set. Oh, and also I talked about this yesterday. See how our gauge set stuck there at 500 or just under 500. I ordered a new gauge yesterday off of Amazon, the exact same brand and everything. It was 12 bucks. So if you're having that issue, you know, worry not. They're not that expensive. It'll be here in about a week or so. All right. So I'll put this through first. I'm going to put the washer on with the, uh, the part that we added up against, you know, the side here. That's on there. There's plenty of room. Now, I'll do the hard part of getting it through. So I can use a block to push it on there. And I'm going to kind of hand screw it. And all I'm waiting to do is get those threads to go through. Okay, threads are through now. Make sure my washer set up right. It is. Feed it into the block. I can find it is right there. Okay, folks, we got a thousand psi ish on there. And that being said, we also have room in here still. There's still a gap in here for the uh, the tubing and then you've also got your washer there so if we have any blade blow-ups in the future we'll let you know how this works but I feel that this is the proper way that this should be set up with that washer being on there will then prevent the block from slamming back or actually it's not really the block that's gonna slam back it's actually this piece right here this whole assembly would go back and that should make the the whole event a little less violent if you will so yeah we'll see we'll keep you informed again please like subscribe i appreciate everyone uh tuning in to the channel and if i come up with any other 
uh, tips or tricks that we can show from our forum or something like that. I'll try to put them into video form so other people can benefit from them. But this is something that other users have come up with. This is not my idea. Uh, this is something that other users in Timber King have come up with as an appropriate way to prevent you know, damage to this block as well as damage to the threads on your T-handle assembly here for tension down the blade. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you around. Thanks.